Hello everybody and welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a planet in Substance Painter. This tutorial is meant to um, just show you what's possible um, in Substance Painter, how you can get um, from a basic sphere to create a planet and you know you can make one like the ones shown behind me. Um, now, if you do want the uh, the scenes, the, the the Unreal Engine projects from um, the you know with these planets that you can see behind me, then you can go in the description below and uh, download them from there. Uh, it's it's gonna cost you, you know, about like buying me a coffee at Starbucks. So if you want to buy me a coffee, I do enjoy myself a good coffee. Then you can head down there and and uh, download these projects and let me know what you think. I mean, I'm looking at them, in, in, you know, just improving them constantly with all sorts of uh, different effects. I'm updating these project files um, all the time with different features. Um, but yeah, if you really want to, you know, if you want to learn, if you want to teach me as well, because I'm sure there are people out there who've got loads of things that they can tell me of how I can improve this content, uh, please let me know. Um, and um, let me know if you guys want a tutorial on Niagara Systems, uh, you know, for vortexes and all sorts of things in space in general, because I am um, I am looking at, as I said, developing that even further, making some really interesting effects for you guys. Uh, but yeah, let's not uh, let's not waste any more time and let's begin in Substance Painter uh, and just a little bit of Blender. But you know, Blender is a free software. Whatever we're gonna do in Blender, you can do it in any other three D software. Substance Painter is where really you know, things get a bit. Uh, well, you obviously need to have Substance Painter. The new, uh, newer version, one that supports displacements, um, that would be quite useful. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's begin. So before we start, I want to show you in Substance Painter a planet that I've made, the, the one that um, you've seen in the preview um, in the intro of the video. So this is the planet that I've made. It what what you'll notice is it's got this massive hole. It doesn't look amazing when you look at it, you know, from this point because it's all displacement. None of this is actual uh, sort of geometry or anything like that that I've done. I just went to the Substance Painter and if I deactivate all the layers, what you'll notice is that our entire shape is just a sphere. There is nothing, nothing, uh, you know, particular about it. The only thing is that, uh, you know, let me just try and drag a material. You can see the wireframe right now. So there's quite, the, the geometry on it is quite dense because I'm going to export the actual mesh from Substance Painter, which is quite nice that, you know, Substance Painter allows this. Um, so, yeah, so I've just added a sort of a layer. Uh, this is just made with a desert rock. So you can use all sorts of things to make your planets. You can use all sorts of material from the Substance Library or make your own in Substance Designer. Uh, but yeah, that, added that uh, desert rock, por uh, porous rock. I've made sure that I've got it set up as um, triplanar because if you have it as a UV projection, what you'll notice here is that it does this. This is how just just because of how the UV is unwrapped on the sphere. This is just a basic uh, UV sphere from Blender. You can get you know a shape like this from anywhere really. Um, so yeah, that's why I want to do. Um, so with with the material selected. You've got the option to uh, move it into. Sorry, that was the. This is the UV projection, and I'm just gonna put it into a triplanar. Um, so this is how it actually looks uh, over here, uh, and then we uh, added some. You know, added another one with a different sort of color with a mask on. So this would just allow some of these creases to come out. One of the very important thing about the, the sphere is that I did indeed bake the mesh, all the maps. So I've just used the sphere itself as a, as a, a map to, to, you know, to bake that detail. Um, then I added some uh, sand on top. So this uh, sand, as you can see, it's got a bit of a height to it. So you can see a bit of a bump over here. Uh, and that's because I've used uh, some, um, you know, uh, an option from shader, from the shader details, which will go through when we start making the planet. Uh, then I've added a um, this first sort of level of displacement, but going, you know, an inverse displacement. Uh, so for rather than going upwards outside of the, um, you know, you outside the boundary of the, of the sphere and make it uh, bigger, I instead went inside of it. So then I added some extra ones and this was just to further uh, go um, down to towards the core of the planet and I'm using levels, the height levels to be able to do this. 
and as you can see i played around with it with some colors and then um i've also went on substance painter sorry on substance 3d so i can show you that here they actually have some planet textures that you can get from you can get so these over here you could just get them and drop them into your scene and all of a sudden you have a planet that looks like for example like mars and um they, they can be 8k and the procedural so that's quite nice i like that about them um, but back to Substance Painter, if we activate the Venus sort of texture and you'll see that Venus doesn't have any height, so height is actually disabled on it. So if I go down here and disable some of these textures from below, this will actually um, help me to have this sort of Venus shape. Now I think I do need this one or maybe, yeah, something like that. Okay, so this is sort of the texture that I ended up with in putting into my uh, sort of my scene where I've got that sort of this, you know, that uh, planet that's cracked open in here and its core is being sort of dissolved. Um, but yeah, let's just start making our own planet and this shouldn't be, shouldn't take long, but it should give you all the necessary sort of knowledge to put together a planet and substance painter. So the first thing we want to do in blender is to press shift a go to mesh and select icosphere sorry not icosphere uv sphere and as you can see this is the sort of level of geometry that we have on it uh, if we go over into this uh, modifier tab we can then add a subdivision surface and i would say go for it twice and that should give us quite a lot of geometry to work with you can then apply the um, the modifier and also just make sure you go up here into the um, object and select shade smooth just to, to visualize how the mesh will look like. If you uh, go into a um, UV editor just for this particular sphere. So I just went into edit mode by pressing tab. You can see how this UV sphere has been um, unwrapped. Now you could, for example, create a, a, a cube instead of a sphere. So, um, you know, you could, for example, add a cube and then bring this cube over into, into here and add a new subdivision surface. And if you do this, you know, maybe about four times, you can see that this is now almost a sphere. It's not a perfect sphere, but almost a sphere. Um, and you would have a, you know, better sort of, of an unwrap. But to be honest, I think it's going to lose a lot of detail just because it's made out of a square as opposed to this sphere where you can see that the tessellation level is far better sort of used. And if we go for triplanar projection, then you're not gonna have any real problems at the top either. So I'm just gonna delete the cube and then select our sphere. We can now, um, well, actually you may want to create the material at this point. So if you name this, you know, if you press the new material tab and name this into, for example, T underscore planet, the reason why I'm doing a T from textures is because that's how I like to name everything that I do in Unreal Engine. So when I will create my textures in Substance Painter and export them, they will also have the abbreviation of, well, they will have this sort of naming convention of T underscore and whatever the texture is, if it's a base color, normal, whatever it will be. Right, so now just press export as an FBX and I'm just gonna add this into my downloads, gonna call it planet um tutorial uh, make sure you have selected objects uh, checked and then press export fbx and uh, now we have the uh, we have the fbx sorted let me just bring substance painter back in um, now i'm going to press file and new then i'll select my uh, planet that i've just created i'll leave it at 4k for now uh, we can export the textures as 4k 2k 8k but do bear in mind that the results do vary. For example, and you know what I mean by this is when you are going to export the mesh as a high poly mesh, for example, that you may want to decimate or, or, or uh, you know, sub, uh, un unsubdivide in another software that you think you've got too many subdivisions on it. When you want to do that, if your texture was at 2K, then your resolution of your actual mesh will be at 2K as well. So if you're using a 4K texture, then the displacement will look a lot better. Now, as I've said to you before, uh, basically um, the planet creation is the same in the sense of you can just use any kind of material that you can get from Substance Painter or Substance 3D. 
Um, so, you know, in, in this particular instance, for example, I can add, I don't know, this palm tree pack. Um, it's very stylized. So if you're looking at making a stylized sort of planet, you could potentially be using this, although I wouldn't, you know, necessarily recommend. I mean, you, you'd need to do some very heavily heavy modifications to it. But the nice thing about these materials that come from Substance 3D is that they have plenty of options. Like, you know, you could remove the moss, for example, from this entire material, which is quite nice because then it gives you this sort of shape. But obviously, I'm not saying that we should be using this as, a, as our uh, base. But if we bring in the Venus, right, this is how Venus looks like. And Venus looks a bit, you know, in my mind, it looks a bit too heavy. So if we take the height off, that looks a bit better. We can then add a normal rather than having a height, we can use normal. Um, and we can add a, some levels to it and switch this over to a normal map. And then we can sort of play around with the normal figures, although I think there is no real, so this, this sort of texture doesn't really have any normals to it. What you can do instead, you can right click it, um, add a filter, and then with this filter you've got in here a height to normal, um, which then you will have to enable your height again. And as you can see, this is really causing it to be quite uh, heavy in detail so you may want to go in here play around with the settings a bit um you probably want to take the normal off at this point as well so you just have height to normal as a detail but again i don't necessarily like it i think i think it looks a lot better without the height information and it's just a normal but what if we want to add some different sort of variations now one thing to do is clear off this um projection at the top so go for the stripe plane and you can already see that that's made it a lot better i'm not saying that this is now accurate to how venus actually looks like since we've moved to dry planar obviously these maps are made so that uh, uv projection would be the best way to put them in um so you've got the material in there let's say we want to add some uh you know combine it with another thing and maybe create like a, an a, an area that's above uh, Venus. So let's just try a different texture. Um, for some reason, it's taking a bit to apply. Um, okay, I'm just going to switch over to try playing it on this as well. I think this texture is a bit too heavy. I mean, it's it's got you know stony like. It's not really going to work very well. Um, let me just look for something else. I really think that this desert sand rock, sand uh, stone will be quite nice to use um, and then what we can do is we can go in the shader settings over in here change to edge length and switch over the divisions to maybe 64 and then start start increasing the height to maybe a 0 0.06 now nothing has really happened to our mesh and that's because this uh, texture here doesn't have any height enabled so once we do that you can see that now it's deforming the entire sort of planet um, you can, if you want, you can reduce the scale to uh, maybe 0 0.5, uh, sorry, not to 0 point, I want to say 1.5. Um, and this just gives us a bit more sort of, um, you know, uh, room to play with on the texture side. And we can select our texture, right click it and add a generator. And then with the generator selected, we can go maybe for a dirt mask. But this is uh, obviously not working uh, very well because dirt is just too porous, too sorry, too fine. So you may want to switch over to maybe like, a, uh, let me just have a look, dripping rust. Um, and this is not, you know, this is not working very well either. But there is a very important reason why not. So I'm going to show you why in just a second. We haven't baked our mesh, so these these generators don't know what they're looking at. So we want to go to 4K, use low poly mesh as a high poly mesh, and then just bake selected textures. Now what will happen is the entire information of your mesh is going to be calculated in 3D space in terms of normal world, world space, ambient occlusion, the curvature and all that. And this is what drives most of the generators in a Substance Painter. So once we do that, then our dirt and everything that we want to add is going to make a lot more sense to the to the entire to, to substance painter as a software um, so it's now um, you know loading 
the changes that we've made because the texture is going to be different and it's going to allow us to do to have a, little, a lot more control over it so one other problem also is that i've added the um the generator on top of the actual fill layer so that's why it's also causing me these issues first of all you want to add the black mask and then add the generator um obviously with the mesh with the baked maps now we're going to select the dirt again and you're seeing what's going on here as this sort of um as, as we're playing around with the dirt itself so you're, you're bringing back the details of that sort of um uh, you know of the masked area uh let's just try with a dripping rust maybe maybe this will be better so yeah you can see the rust spreading you can play around with these settings just to get a bit more of a variation um, and all of this is actual geometry as you can see in here um, so let's just try and smooth it out something like that and one of the things to notice is that you can well you can smooth most of these uh, most of these um, values but you can also um, right click and, and do like um, um, a paint and then if you have a paint you can actually paint some of this stuff out if you want to um, so just with a paintbrush uh, either a uh, either, either a uh, positive value so if you go in here you've got either black which means you are deleting or white which means you are adding back in as you can see uh, let's just take that away and we'll leave it as you know what we've got right here one thing that we want to do is for example change this to a more well let's try a red sandstone let's see if that sort of merges a bit better with the with the plant itself um and again this because you're working at 4k this does make a difference quite of an impact um in terms of um you know applying these so i've added us this red i don't know seems to be okay-ish now we can try a red rock as well see if that's uh, going to be better uh let's see actually i think i think that's the red sandstone red uh, red rock seems to be doing almost the same type of thing okay um i am thinking that if you select the actual texture and if you go into the um you know you got some pebbles some dust amount you don't really have any colors to it which is a bit uh which is not really nice but i'm just going to add some other level over here on the layer and then go to height and i can now if you see if you look over here i can now sort of increase the height level or decrease it so but this is not giving us the most amazing result and that's mainly because of these fine sort of details that we have in here so we may want to spread that rust maybe smooth it out like that uh, then we have these intensities i'm not really sure if they're going to do anything not really you can also invert you can always invert the texture as well if you want less detail uh, but yeah we can do something like this I'm not, I'm not particularly enjoying the color but the color itself can change so if you copy and paste this particular layer but then over here in the material you can add something else so for example we can bring this um, desert um, and you can see that that is going to go on top of this and then this texture color can also be uh, changed so you can do all sorts of combinations like i've said and then you you just select what you whatever you want um i'm just gonna toy around a bit with the settings and just uh see if i can get something that's a bit more of what i want but at the end of the day you could also always delete this and just add in a fill layer which is going to be obviously white and then this fill layer you can change the color to whatever whatever you want so let's say i want it like this okay and then i want it to be very rough um and then i can copy this sort of this mask from here i will well i'm sure you could copy the um, you could copy the mask let me just try no it just copies the layer 
well you know you can always as i said you can always um turn this into a into a type of a fill layer like that you see and now you can just select whatever color you want but then it's masked to these sort of areas where it was applying um, and then you can just combine you just continue on combining these sort of um, one other thing that you can also do is you can use compare mask but the only problem with the compare mask is that this venus surface doesn't actually have we're not using any height information on it so if we activate it you can see what's going on but one way to fix this um, this sort of issue with venus uh, clipping through the top layer is you select the top layer you go into height and then over here you can select replace and as you can see this is now uh, affecting so everywhere where this top layer is venus the venus layer will not kick through uh, this is a very ugly planet, by the way. <laughs> um, but the levels will allow you, like I've said, to, for example, you can you can really go down with this, with the height. So, you know, you can really sort of try and submerge the planet as much as you can. Um, so you can see over here. Okay, that's not really good. Let me just try. No, this is just this is just really spiking it all up. That's, that's quite an interesting shape, isn't it? Okay, let me just revert, and then the Venus part we can just take the height away. I do believe that we've got a bit too much of this texture, so we may want to hide a bit more from it. But you can always change from here to something else. Now, one thing that I wanted to show you actually, because just because of um, so, I'm just going to increase this for us maybe to about this point and again you'd want to do some bit of cleanup in here uh, just to make sure that you're getting all this away or you know another easier way to well not an easier way but just just an easy way to fix would be to add a, um, a filter and then change this filter to blur and then with the blur filter you can actually sort of well it's blurring the texture uh actually no not blur i wanted to add a um a height slope so one second there should be blur and i'm sure we can find it in here blur, blur slope yeah there we go okay and with this one you basically can uh, blur some of these these areas although it's not really doing what I'm what I wanted to do let me just bring it above below the levels hmm, interesting so I think I'll have to add the filter over here yeah there we go so we needed the blur slope to be on the actual um, on the actual mask itself rather than um, so we'll just use a one value of one in here so this helps a bit more with the decreasing some of these sharper points that come out and you can you can you can increase it further if you want to just to make sure that those sharp points are as hidden as possible um i think let me just try now it has to be on top of the actual part over there right so one thing that i want to show you as well is now that you have let's say let's say this is your planet and you want to export the mesh you can export the mesh and select with displacement tessellation press export and then we'll just call this planet tutorial um, displacement and this is exporting it it has like 270,000 triangles now here's the uh, here's the interesting part about this you could in theory now um replace this mesh with the one that you've just exported out of the system okay so let's replace the sphere but before we do that uh what i want to do is um sorry i've put this to um so this is the height right and we've exported the mesh but what i've realized is the best way to export the mesh would be with displacement tessellation and then have recompute vertex normals deselected and then press export and we're going to replace that displacement map that we've done previously. Now that's done, we in our shader editor in here, we want to put this to zero. 
we don't want any height as of yet. And then we're going to go to our project configuration, select, and then press double click the displacement uh, sphere that we've exported earlier. And this is going to bring the sphere that we've created and, and exported. Uh, obviously it looks exactly the same as we as it did before, but now there is no height information active. Now what we can do is go into our uh, in, into our bake mesh maps and use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. That's fine. Uh, it's basically going to use the same sort of mesh that it has, the, the, the one that we just loaded. And we can select bake selected textures. And now it's, it's using the geometric data that we've exported previously. It's using that to generate the new uh, maps. And this in theory should look, um, you know, should look okay. Um, and this is giving us new sort of information for our, um, for our mesh. But as you can see, this is no longer sort of applying. This is no longer uh, working very well. And that's because um, our, our configuration of the actual maps has changed. Um, but this allows us to have a more control over the mesh itself because we have we now have geometric sort of curvature and ambient occlusion and so on that we can then use for a different other sort of um, effects. So if we add another material here and let's say this material, we want to change it to a triplanar as well. And now we're adding a, um, so let's mention I'm adding a generator. And I'm saying to the generator, I want this material to only be only be applied to the curvature. Um, sorry, I've done that thing again where I'm not where I've not added a um, a black mask. So a black mask, and then add a generator, and we switch this over to a curvature. And then with the curvature, we can then have a look. Interesting. Well, actually the curvature, as you can see, is quite blank. So let me just try to use a different one, maybe an ambient occlusion. So yeah, you can see what's happening right there. Yeah. And I'll go, I can invert it. Okay. So let me just increase this balance or no, something like that. And then I can, I have a contrast. I can make it a lot more, well, I can blur it if I want to, you know, like that. But the reason why I wanted to show you this is because, you know, in practice, you can do a better job than what I've done here if you put the time into it. But the important thing is that now your, you know, subs your, your program, your Substance Painter knows where there are some areas where there are cavities, actual cavities within the, within the mesh. Uh, previously, I didn't know because it was just a flat, well, not a flat, but it was a sphere, a perfect sphere. But now it no longer just has a, a, a you know, actual, it has actual geometry. Uh, and it knows based on actual geometry where you can put this new texture that we just added with more details. Um, and I think that's very powerful, again, because um, when, you want to, when you want to create different effects, that's going to be very powerful. Some of the things that um, you definitely want to iron out are things like, you know, these sort of areas where they're sticking out. So this can be fixed, again, via filters, via actual brushing, manually brushing those areas um, to be flat before you obviously commit into exporting the mesh. Um, and this is a very, uh, well, this is not exactly the most interesting looking planet out there, but this is just an example of something that you can do in Substance Painter uh, when you're creating your planets. And there are, well, there are probably an infinite amount of combinations. You can go outside in the, in the, you know, in your garden right now, take some reference photos from the ground and then put them into, uh, into maybe Substance Alchemist and create a, a, a square texture out of that. And then you can put it, you bring it over into Substance Painter and pretty much you can create a new type of planet. Bear in mind that planets are made of the same materials and same things that you see around you every day, but just in incredibly large quantities. So it's not so, uh, you know, it, it, it's not outlandish to think that a planet will look, would look as dull as the sort of the concrete outside of your house because there probably is one that's made of a lot of materials closer, you know, a, a sort of a, a chemical composition that's closer to that out there. I'm not, you know, obviously I'm not saying that you're 
going to find identically a planet looking like concrete. And I'm not suggesting that you should make a planet that looks like concrete, but it will you will definitely not be far off when you make a planet that does not have that much of a significant sort of um, uh, diversity into its uh, into its texture if the planet itself is dead. So planet Earth looks amazing because it obviously has oceans and greenlands and deserts and stuff. But, um, you know, a planet like uh, Venus, so we can we could obviously strip this down to Venus. Um, yeah, it's got some, you know, it's got some nice sort of areas where this uh, I, this there's like a soup on it because it's a gas. Uh, uh, it's a gas planet, so you've got like this sort of soup of of um, of uh, all. I'm sure Venus is a gas, isn't it? Um, it's got all all these sort of soup of of of, um, of clouds and so on swirling around, and the texture could be animated in your software of choice to make it sort of move, um, or you can create layers with just this particular, you know, sort of like this particular area here, layers on top of your uh, your sphere that are just rotating around it to give the impression of, of actual movement. But there's loads of different things that you can do. But I hope you guys found this um, video useful. Uh, please leave a like, a comment and subscribe to the channel if you did. If you have any sort of feedback, please uh, go for it. You can find in the description below, you can find download links like I've previously mentioned to my project files for Unreal Engine and some of the some of them for Blender and, you know, other, other such projects that I've worked in. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. I am really looking at developing my space scene even further. I'm looking for, con you know, constantly for different ways of enhancing, uh, making it look a lot more, I wouldn't say realistic because I don't think we all, we sort of, we have enough reference to know what realistic looks like i mean we know what our sort of solar system looks like give or take but not if you're talking about alien planets you can only use your creativity and your imagination and just make it look as you know as good as best as you can really but yeah thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one